so over here I have uh, a combo, a motherboard and a CPU combo that I've ordered. This is uh, just the motherboard box. It's a uh, Jingyu, some shit like that. X99 Titanium D3 motherboard, that's what it's called. It's an X99 uh, Intel uh, 2011 uh, V3 X99 motherboard. Uh, these are based on the B85 chipset. I know it's old. It's old as fuck. It's like 10 years old, but it still delivers a lot of power and it was really, really cheap. It wasn't a good deal. It cost me less than 50 bucks, which is crazy. For the, for the motherboard and the CPU, it was a combo of two of them. So, uh, yeah, I had to buy it on the back. It looks exactly the same as the front. Uh, yeah, I think that's the back, actually. That's the front. Okay, it doesn't matter. Uh, right now, I'm going to unbox it and see what we got with it. But, uh, yeah, I bought this for my uh, storage server because uh, it turned out the hardware that I first used over there wasn't quite enough for it. I needed more cores and uh, a better just a better motherboard over there something with more features because I wanted to add some other things to it so I can cannot be using the same hardware that I have over there uh, I needed something with uh, a little bit more expansion capabilities uh, anyway I'm just going to unbox it because I really want to see what it looks like and uh, we'll take a closer look Okay, so I unboxed everything. Um, it came in with uh, <coughs> these things over here, some accessories. Uh, just uh, thank you for your purchase. Uh, warranty card, probably. Uh, mounting for a cooler, like those clip-on cooler, which I'm not gonna use. It came flying out, so uh, one of the screws is around here. I don't know, I'll look for it later. I won't even need it anyway, so. That's not needed, doesn't matter. Came with the SATA 3 cable, like uh, 90 degrees, as you can see. Uh, uh, some washers, like, I think that's for the cooler. I don't know what it is for, but not, I don't think I'm gonna use those. Uh, the motherboard and the CPU is already installed in there, so uh, let me just take that out. Put that out of the anti-static bag. Oh, and it came in like, uh, foam pad whatever it is whatever it's called and boy that, that looks like long and, sh and you know short like yeah the length is like like it's tall and short yeah like short as like the horizontal kind of way anyway it doesn't matter uh, yeah CPU is already installed in there uh, I'll pull it out in a second just to uh, verify that uh, it's indeed what we got with it uh, there are four DIMM slots, so in each of them you could uh, install install a 64 gigabyte, which totals in 256 gigabyte in overall, which is <laughs> would be way too overkill for me. Won't need that amount. That, that amount. That's crazy. Uh, you get two M.2 slots over here. One of them is uh, SATA, and this is NVMe. This supports SATA, this is NVMe. Uh, over here you have an X4 uh, PCIe slot over here. Uh, X16, X16, and X16 that works in X4. Uh, let's see, this is an X1. Over here you have like one, uh, like this uh, BIOS code, like for diagnostics I guess. Uh, you have a USB connector over here. Uh, this is for the speaker, I think. This is for resetting your BIOS, probably. This is for uh, your system fan. This is like an HD audio, won't need that. Uh, this is your, uh, no, these, th these are the front I.O. connectors. This is a COM connector. This is a reset and power off buttons. USB 3 connector, uh, CMOS uh, battery, uh, slot uh, now the SATA you get like uh, four SATA 4s and this is SATA 2 connectors I know exactly what I'm gonna be using it for I have some SATA 2 drives so I'll be using that these connectors I also have a controller but you know I like to mix both of them 
Uh, these are like dial-ups that you configured uh, if you want to, like if you use the, NV, the M.2 SATA connector, you lose uh, a few of the SATA ports, probably you configure which one you want to lose, which one you want to sacrifice, I guess. And that's how you configure them. Uh, I'll get to that later. Yeah, and this is the PSA, PCH, the chipset. Uh, it seems like a small uh, heat sink on it. I hope it won't be like a heat issue. Uh, over here you have like a cooler, like a fan on the VRMs. From what I was reading, it's pretty useless. So I don't know if it's gonna be too loud. I might disconnect it. You can disconnect it over here. Uh, over here you have the 8 pin uh, CPU connector, a uh, fan connector, like 3 pin, a 24 uh, pin connector for uh, your uh, power supply. And over here we have the CPU uh, 4 pin PWM connector for your CPU cooler. And this is the front IOs. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, like the internal connectors, and over here you have the external connectors, uh, the PS2, uh, you have 6 USB 2, like 4 over here, and another 2 here, USB 2 connectors, and uh, 2 USB 3 connectors, I think they should have made like these USB 3 connectors as well, and that way you would have 4 and 4, but it doesn't matter, it won't need that much anyway. Uh, you have uh, an RJ45 uh, 1 gigabit uh, connector over here uh, and all the audio uh, connectors over here won't need those as well uh, this is for a storage server won't need all this uh, stuff but it's okay uh, yeah so here is the CPU let me just uh, take it out carefully uh, where is it right here uh, yeah, yeah, it's right here. Always gets confusing with the uh, X99 CPU uh, mounting. Okay, I gotta be careful not to damage the pins. Okay, and we have, yep, the Intel. I don't know if you can see that, but I'll just read it. The Intel Xeon E5 dash. 2673 V3 uh, 2.4 gigahertz and yeah it's made in Malaysia whatever <laughs> yeah this is exactly what I've ordered I'll install it back in okay that's in all right just snap uh, a picture right. Okay, so basically, uh, right now I'm going to test it. But for me to test it, I don't have a CPU cooler like on the fly over here. I did, however, uh, buy uh, another CPU cooler, but not for this, not for uh, 2011 3. For that, I will have to get this uh, CPU cooler that I'm currently using for my uh, AMD build. I'm kind of going to do the old switcheroo between uh, this and the deep cool cooler that I bought because uh, it doesn't support 20. The deep cool cooler that I have doesn't support the uh, 2011-3 and this one does. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace between them. I'm going to put the deep cool cooler that I bought. Let me just show you. It's the AG400+. Uh, plus. Yeah, there we go. I'll we'll just bring it over here anyway. Uh, this doesn't support the 2011-3, uh, so I cannot install it over here, unfortunately. I would have loved to, but uh, I can't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in the AMD, and I'm going to get the Thermalrite True Spirit uh, Revo B, something like that. I don't know. It, that's what it's called, Plus. Yeah, to fans, it's the Plus version. So uh, this one does support 2011-3, uh, so I can use it over there. So uh, I will have to do the old switcheroo, basically. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to get everything set up, and uh, we'll fire it up, see how it is. Uh, I'm interested uh, in uh, seeing this motherboard in action and see how it is. I also uh, do have, uh, let me just get, uh, I do need to get those as well. 
I do have uh, two sticks of 16 gigabyte each, 32 gigabyte in total of uh, ECC DDR3 memories because this motherboard uh, supports DDR3. Yeah, that they, they do that. Like my workstation build have a uh, another X99 dual Xeon. Let me just yeah, this one and it supports uh, ECC memory, uh, DDR3 ECC memory. So. I don't know how they do that. I guess they like they took they take some chipset like the the chipset is B85. So yeah, I guess it makes sense. B85 is DDR3. So uh, yeah, they do some combinations with that. I don't know how they do that, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm just going to install these uh, memory sticks because I bought them for another build that didn't quite work out well. The motherboard didn't support it, so. This one is definitely going to support it, so uh, uh, there is kind of a sticker over here, I'll remove that later, uh, or maybe now, <laughs> hold on, uh, yeah, uh, so yeah, basically I'm going to install these, uh, the way you install them, for dual channel, I've, I've asked the seller that I bought it from, you install one stick over here and one stick over here, like, right here and right here and these are supposedly the dual channel uh, channels if you only have two sticks uh, of uh, memory like if you're only gonna populate two like I'm gonna do right here so you have to install it that way uh, yeah without further ado I'm going to install everything and I'll pick it back up and uh, we'll take a look how it looks like the final result okay so I got everything plugged in into the Jingju uh, I don't know how to spell that, the X99 uh, Titanium B3 motherboard. I have the ECC memory installed here, the cooler that I was talking about. I switched it with the AMD build that I have. Pretty beefy cooler, awesome. Yeah, I got everything ready here on my uh, test bench. And uh, we'll check it out. Let's turn it on. Okay, power cycling. And it does the micro code, and I heard a beep. One beep that means like. Okay, yeah, it's booting right. Jingju saw the BIOS screen. Okay, it's cycled down. Hold on. Yeah, it's gonna do the what it does. Hold on, let's just wait. And it beeps like that first, and then it does some other things, but yeah, let's see if it cycles down again. Ah, no, I think it's okay. Now it's uh, booting to Windows. I have uh, the M.2 installed over there. I already did a restore, like the image that I made for it. So uh, yeah. It's uh, it's working. It's successful. It's working well. Uh, yeah, it looks sick to be honest with you. And I cannot hear the fan. Does it run? I don't. I can't even see. Let me turn on the flashlight that I have over here. Yeah, it's running, but it's near silent. I can't hear anything from it. Wow, that's pretty silent. That's pretty good. So I'm right here in the bio screen for the Jing whatever <laughs> for whatever name it is X99 D3 uh, titanium. And it looks like your basic uh, uh, BIOS, you know the X99 BIOS. Uh, yeah, pretty nice, pretty cool. Uh, it detects my uh, RAM right off the bat, my uh, processor, I didn't see it, but uh, I'm pretty sure we could uh, get information on it right now. Let me see. And then it's, uh, uh, we got our NVMe drive detected. And how do you go back? Yeah. Okay, for some reason uh, they changed the location of it, but here all the information like uh, the L13 cache RAM and everything. Here is the processor, the Xeon E5 uh, 2673 uh, V3. Yeah, yeah, everything is pretty solid for me. Oh, I do have one 
important settings that I have to check. VMX enable, beautiful. VMX, that's for the virtualization because I have to have it for some stuff. Let's see, yeah, yeah, that's it's enough, yeah, perfect. All right, so uh, everything works well, everything that I wanted. Uh, yeah. I'm uh, gonna sit on this uh, motherboard for now because I have some other things that need to be arriving uh, soon and then I will be installing it into my storage server to replace the hardware that I have over there because it's not enough for me I need uh, something more more solid like this something more robust so uh, this would do perfectly uh, yeah yeah I think I'm going to close off this video right now if you enjoyed this video, uh, make sure you like uh, and stay tuned if you want for more videos. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.